Nothing was as it was before. Out of the void, God created light and darkness, water and land, morning and evening, sun and moon, plants and animals, and human beings in the likeness of God. And it was a new beginning, and it was good. But soon the people strayed and many lost sight of God. Again, everything changed. Out of the bonds of slavery, God freed Israel. Parting the waters, giving safe passage, protecting against the oppressor, restoring relationship with glorious triumph. It was a new beginning, and it was good. But the people struggled, and they lost their way, and they drifted far from God. Once more, everything changed. Into the brokenness of the world, God in Christ Jesus came. Human and divine, shining new light, proclaiming good news, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, tending to the poor, naming the unjust, forgiving the sinful, boldly bestowing love. It was a new beginning, and it was good. And some believed, and some followed, and some loved Jesus, and some were fearful. Some resisted. And then everything changed. Out of profound love for humanity, God gave God's self in Christ to death wrongfully condemned, painfully tortured, put on public display, hearts broken and hope lost. It felt like the end, and it did not feel good. Hearts were broken, and tears were shed, and shock and disbelief pervaded. And then when hope seemed lost, everything changed. Out of the finality and the darkness of death, Jesus rose, resurrected into new life. The stone moved, the tomb empty, tossed linens on the floor. Folks in white heralding good news. Women terrified and amazed. Disciples in shock and awe. Death was defeated. It was a new beginning, and it was very, very good. Tonight, we are reminded of God's steadfast love for us and for the blessing of new beginnings. We celebrate the gift of new life, given through the death and the resurrection of God's beloved Son, Jesus. Having walked with him through the darkness and the suffering and the death, and acknowledging where we ourselves have gone astray and where we have lost sight of God, we together now fully enter into this holy mystery to bask in the brilliance of the light of Christ as we proclaim with gratitude and with joy all that God has done for us. We together stand on the cusp of new life. Throughout our lives, we cross over thresholds. And each time we cross a threshold, we leave some part of us, of who we've been, behind. So to create space for who it is that we are becoming. We move from elementary school to middle school. We've moved from being single 
to being married, to becoming parents, to taking care of parents. In some ways, each threshold that we cross takes us from life into death and back to life again. The women who loved Jesus, who came to his tomb to anoint him, crossed over a major threshold. They were wrought with grief and despair. With Jesus' death, they had been thrust from life with him into the darkness and the stark reality of life without him. It's something they would never have chosen, but they now had to learn how to navigate. The Gospel of Mark tells us that they were terrified and amazed. And isn't that how it goes with thresholds, with new beginnings? Zoe, you shared with me your desire to invite God into your life. You told me that you wish to be baptized. God planted the seed of longing within you. And tonight, we welcome you into this body of Christ. And as special and as significant as baptism is, I also want to acknowledge to you that baptism can be a little daunting. Even as, though you chose it and you did, it's quite natural that you might feel anticipation and a little bit anxious. Because, truthfully, it's not possible to know exactly what life is going to look like afterwards. We don't know what your faith is going to ask of you. But I can assure you of this. You're not alone. You have God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit to guide you. You have the love of your sisters and your parents to support you. And you have the love and the encouragement of this whole community who will stand by you, who will answer questions, who will help you in any way that you need. Remember that Christianity is not a destination. It is a journey. And you have many companions on the way. So lean in tonight and trust that as you cross over this new threshold, that God is about to bring forth in you some glorious new beginning. Friends, in closing tonight, I'd like to offer you this blessing by Irish poet and mystic John O'Donohue. It's called For a New Beginning. And it richly captures the depth and the complexity and the mystery and the wonder that each one of us faces as we step forward into new beginnings and new life. In out-of-the-way places of the heart, where your thoughts never think to wander, this beginning has been quietly forming waiting until you were ready to emerge. For a long time it has watched your desire, feeling the emptiness growing inside you, noticing how you willed yourself on, still unable to leave what you had outgrown. It watched you play with the seduction of safety and the gray promises of sameness whispered heard the waves of turmoil rise and relent, wondered, would you always live like this? Then the delight, when your courage kindled and out you stepped onto new ground, your eyes young again with energy and with dream, a path of plenitude opening before you. Though your destination is not clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is at one with your life's desire. 
awaken your spirit to adventure. Hold nothing back. Learn to find ease in risk. Soon you will be home in a new rhythm, for your soul senses that the world awaits you. Amen. <laughs>